Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back with the long-awaited Core Home Fitness Dumbbell Handle Teardown. What I have are two broken Core Home Fitness Dumbbell Handles. They were provided, uh, thank you David, by the way, for providing these to me. This is my base. I actually have a pair of these dumbbells. They haven't broken yet on me, but I didn't want to risk breaking the handle in order to take it apart and take a closer look at it because of what had happened with the new Obel handle in the last teardown. So fortunately, he donated these two handles to me so that I could take a closer look at what happened to them and the strengths and weaknesses and kind of compare it to what we saw in the new Obel design. So uh, I'm going to start by just doing a quick demonstration of what happens with this handle on the base, how it kind of works on this base. And then we're going to take a look inside a handle that I already tore down. But I'll explain how I tore that handle down so that you understand how these things come apart. Uh, my first impression of the handle is that it is uh, very, very similar to the uh, new Obel from the outside. And let me grab here, this is actually a replacement new Obel uh, handle. This is a broken one, but uh, you can see here that that is a new Obel handle side by side with the core. So, you know, very similar approach to the way they're doing things. This has kind of a useless passive neural on it. This one has a rubber grip that I also don't like. But, um, you know, their, their uh, exteriors are similar. They both use plastic housings. And there are some metal parts in uh, this new Obel, but this core, as you're going to see, is built, in my opinion, a lot more sturdy than this new Obel. However, just like the new Obel, this one has a weakness. So we're going to take a look at that shortly. So let me put this aside. And oh, by the way, we're going to take a closer look at this new Obel. Uh, in another video, I'm going to try to take this thing apart without breaking it and see if it, it can indeed come apart now. Now that I know how it's constructed, that'll be my attempt at uh, seeing if I can do this without breaking it. It's already begun coming apart here because it's got a crack on the shell. But we'll take a look at this in uh, a future video. So what we have here, one sec here, there we go. Okay, what we have here is just the empty handle on a base. And what I'm going to do is show you how this actually works when you select your weights. Now you might have seen this in other videos. You twist this handle and as you twist it, it's going to extend telescoping rods on both sides. Now you can't tell in this video, you can't feel it, but this handle's broken and you can feel how tight, how much force I have to use on this grip to get these to extend. And that is because of a certain type of break that you're going to see after. But anyway, this extends out to the full 50. And then if you lift it, you can kind of see here, these, as you'll see later, are grooves that a mechanism in here that locks the weights in place, locks this groove to keep this thing from moving in and out. Uh, these little indentations are a um, for these pins. Every single time that you adjust your, your handle and, it, and this groove lines up with this pin, the pin retracts. When this mountain here, this um, peak, lines up underneath the pin, the pin extends outward and it grabs the smallest plate, the plate that's right here. So that's why they alternate. So this grabs the plate, re releases the plate, grabs it, releases it for the smallest plate that gives you the uh, small five pound increments. And um, as you're going to see shortly, this, even though it is a molded plastic on the outside, actually has a thin steel core on the inside. And that is part of why this uh, breaks the way that it does and jams up. So anyway, now let's put
put this back down to five and uh, take this off the base, put the base aside and slide over our parts. Now, in order, just like with the new Obel, I had to try to figure out how to take this handle apart. And when you're looking at the handle, there's a couple obvious things. There are these lock rings, right? One on each end. But beyond that, there are no screws, bolts, or anything to indicate how to take this thing apart. So I had to fiddle with it in order to see how to get it apart. What I discovered is, first of all, you pry up this end ring, okay? So that's this here. And underneath it is another ring. And this is the kind, you've seen these before, that you need to, it's a split ring, and you need to get your screwdriver under it and then run your screwdriver all the way around and basically pop this off the end of the shaft right there, okay? So, once you've got that off, this housing won't come off. You can pull all you want, but this housing is not going to come off. How do you get it off? Turns out <laughs> that if you grab a pair of pliers and one at a time pull on this pin, this is a spring-loaded pin, if you pull on this pin so that, let's see if I can get this close up here, so that you pull the pin out high enough, far enough, and then you use a twist tie, as I have here, and that keeps the pin from retracting back into the unit. If this pin retracts and this pin retracts, those two pins together keep this from sliding off the handle. You can't get this housing off. So this little trick will allow you to then slide this housing off of the rest of the handle. So once you've got that, what you're going to find on one side is a plate like this. And this plate is just, it's a metal plate. It's just in there covering up the spring holes for the springs and ball bearings, okay? There's a spring in here and a ball bearing, spring in here and a ball bearing. And then these little weights, they actually put a couple of these, two in each side. So you can see one in here. Here's, here's the other one. They're, they're glued in with an adhesive and you, can act, you don't need to take these out. I took them out to show you what they look like, but these do not need to come out when you're taking this apart. But if you want to take them out, you can pry them up from the edges that are exposed here and you can get these out of that cavity. And this is what it looks like when you take both of the weights out of here. And I'm assuming they did this to bring the handle up to the base weight of five pounds. They needed to make a five pound handle and they didn't have enough material, so they had to add some metal back into the unit in order to bring it up to about five pounds. So, once you've got your metal plate off, and if you took off your weights, you would still have this on the shaft, okay? Inside here is a sliding mechanism that is what engages the base. So when you put this on the base, let's take a look at this base here. When you put this on the base, that metal uh, tab there presses in on this metal component. And watch what happens here. It's spring-loaded. And what that does is that disengages 
the assembly, the internal assembly, so that it can all rotate in order for you to be able to change your weights. Um, that's that. This is how it locks. So uh, this pin here and this tab here combined keep the assembly from being able to be rotated unless this is in the base. That little tab engages right here on this shaft and it literally goes right inside one of these plastic grooves. So for each increment, as you're adjusting your weight, that tab locks down in here and it keeps this shaft from moving in and out. Okay, so now, <clears throat> excuse me, now you've got this slid off. Behind it, you have a couple things going on. One, you have a, a rubber washer and another lock ring. Now this kind, you're going to need, of course, lock ring type pliers, snap ring pliers. And uh, if you take these off, you have the wheel with detents, very similar to how other brands do this. They use a ball bearing with a spring. In this case, uh, by the way, if you look at Bowflex, Bowflex uses just a spring and a ball bearing. Core went one step further. I don't really think this little thing adds value, but it is a, a little pocket, a little socket that goes in the spring, sits on that ball bearing like this. And so when you're turning your handle, this thing slides from pocket to pocket, click, 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 click. And it gives you that positive feedback of the different positions for your weight settings on the handle. And of course, there's one in each side of the handle. But one of the things I did notice is on this particular handle, and I haven't taken the other handle apart yet, but on this handle, it had two of these assemblies on one side. So this, okay, was on one side right here. There was a spring and a ball bearing and a plastic pocket here and here. And this wheel here, only on one side, the other side, had this wheel, but no ball bearings or anything. So <laughs> I, I guess you don't need it. You, you don't really need to have four of these in the, the handle. And I guess that's their way of cutting down on the parts. But uh, anyway, there's just two of these positioned on one half inside your handle. Okay. Oh, and these, of course, come with tabs in them as you'll see uh this stuff locks into the slot on the inner uh portion of the, the the tube that goes underneath your grip okay so let's put this back here for a moment put this back with that one so at uh the next piece in line is this this is a super solid <laughs> Piece. This is all metal and the heaviest part of the dumbbell. In fact, together, these probably provide at least uh, close to half the weight of the, the dumbbell handle. Uh, it, is a, it is not plastic like on the Nuo Bell. Uh, if you remember, let me pull this here. This was the Nuo Bell plastic number ring. And this... It's basically a cast piece of weight uh, inside another piece that appears to be maybe machined. But uh, they put them together and they put the numbering on it. So a much heftier and, in my opinion, better made part than what's on the Nuo Bell. So you've got this. And then uh, you're going to notice that the four tabs of this coincide with the notches so that these two go together just like that. And then if you look inside here, I don't know if you can see that, there are actually two um, slots. Let me see if I can get a better, there we go. See this here. That is a slot there and there's one there. And those 
slide into the handle. They lock into the rest of the handle like that. That way, when you're turning your grip and you're turning this, that whole inner uh, assembly is turning as a unit. And this grip, which is just a hollow, thin piece of plastic with a little bit of a textured rubber on the outside. You can kind of see that here. And so that's just molded plastic and then a little thin layer of molded rubber. And that goes on here and it engages into the shape of this uh, end cap. Let me show you that here. You can kind of see this. And these two go together like so, okay? So when you're turning your grip, this turns this, these four notches turn this, and this turns this center tube to rotate the tube. Now, let me pull that back off, put this aside, and take a look at the most important part of, in my opinion, this dumbbell. And this really separates it from Nuo Bell. Now, it has a weakness, but it's not the same as the Nuo Bell weakness. First, I'm gonna show you something about the Nuo Bell in case you don't remember. This is the inside of Nuo Bell. It's got a steel rod with two aluminum uh, components that are riding on that rod to separate in order to uh, grab the additional weight. And then remember, it uses these eight of these little cam followers in this groove, and it rides this groove. But when these things break, when they shear off, you end up with this. You can see in here, all, of, all four of those pins, that used to be this, this pin here. All four have sheared off. So once you've got this situation here, it no longer rides in these grooves. It just skips the grooves. And that's why on New Obel's handle, when you, uh, where is it here? When you adjust the New Obel handle, if this side and this side aren't in sync, if this says five and this says 10, you've already broken uh, some of your cam followers. So, uh, that's one of the symptoms that you'll see online when someone says, oh, I was twisting my handle on my Newell bell, and now it says 20 on this side and 25 on that side. That's because these are now broken inside that handle. And this is about a $190 handle to replace. And it's unfixable. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to come up with a way to fix this. We'll take a look again in a future video. So let's get back to this one. Now that you know the weakness of the Nuo Bell, let's take a look at what's going on with Core. Core uses an outer metal sleeve. It feels like steel. An inner metal sleeve. So this is another tube inside the other tube. But more importantly, and this is what I love about this design, they did it right. Those are metal cam followers. This is known as a barrel cam. It's, it has grooves in it that turn rotational motion into linear motion. So when this rides that groove, it withdraws and extends these shafts. And that is never going to wear out. That will be like, this will look like this 20 years from now. It's a great setup. They did a really good job with it. But <laughs> they combine that with these. And these are the weakness of this dumbbell. And you can see here, that one's already cracked. You can see the steel core. That one's already cracked. This one is cracking right there. And what happens is this. The plastic's cracked, the, the inner metal rod has begun to bend. 
once this bends and is no longer perfectly straight, it's not going to retract into this tube as easily. It's going to get jammed trying to go back in. You need this shaft to be perfectly straight to be able to go in and out smoothly on the shaft of this dumbbell. And so uh, once you drop these dumbbells and it cracks that shaft, and I don't know how many drops it takes. There are people who said that their dumbbells, their core dumbbells arrived with broken handles. So maybe it only takes one good drop in order for the plastic to break, the metal to deform, and it no longer will retract back into this tube. And you'll hear people say, oh, the only way that I could get my weight plates off was to bang this back in. So what they're doing is they're jamming this back inside the tube in order to get their weight plates off of the broken dumbbell. And it really is the only way because there's nothing else exposed for you to adjust or get to in order to take the dumbbell apart to get your weights off. So you have to pound, you know, use a punch or a screwdriver or whatever and pound this back in like this so that you can get your plates off of your broken dumbbell. And again, you know, th <laughs> this inner part, in my opinion, is the way that Nuo Bell should have done it. If the Nuo Bell cam followers were done in a uh, more robust way like this, it'd be, I think, a much better dumbbell. Likewise, for Core, if Core were to spend the extra money and come up with maybe a, uh, a steel of the type maybe that they use on barbells, you know, something that is going to be able to take the impact and not bend at all, or maybe there is a material out there, a carbon fiber or some other plastic uh, composite that can bend, but have enough elasticity to return to its original shape. So one way or another, Core needs to fix this because this is not really repairable. I tried <laughs> to get these off and they seem to be pressed in to place, locked in. There is no screw head on here. Uh, I tried grabbing them with pliers to pull them out. I tried unscrewing them and they, of course they don't unscrew, they just keep rotating. So there really is no way to create an upgraded shaft with a new uh, cam follower in order for you to do a repair. So in this case, we can take the dumbbell handle apart fairly easily, but we can't repair the most important part on the dumbbell. So if I were to try to make a uh, replacement part for this, I would either have to come up with new shafts and a way for you to drill out and, and replace this uh, cam follower on the new shaft, because these are connected. That's connected to this. Uh, or I'd have to come up with an entire new part, inner and outer tubes, cam followers, and the shafts. And that is a lot. Uh, I don't think that I can do that in a way that's going to be affordable. Uh, you know, that I, I just don't know. I haven't even begun to look into what would be involved to do that. And then, of course, there are patent issues and stuff like that. When you have something so specific like this, even though a barrel cam isn't novel, they may have some sort of claim on the way that this is all uh, part of this assembly. And, uh, and so that would be problematic. You know, coming up with a shaft with a new cam follower, not so much. Uh, but, you know, again, in its current form, it can be taken apart, but it cannot be repaired. So uh, what do I think overall? Well, the core handle is a pretty, this, <laughs> this thing is hefty. Uh, by comparison, when you, when you have this in your hand and you feel this, this feels m more, almost twice the weight of this, even though it's not. It just feels like a very well-made dumbbell handle. Uh, so don't let the similarities in the exteriors of these things uh, fool you. I think for the money, Core makes a better dumbbell handle. 
Uh, but, you know, again, unless they're selling these replacements for a reasonable price, you're kind of stuck once this breaks. So it doesn't make a difference how it breaks, right? If the uh, cam follower breaks on, the, on the, the newel bells or the shaft breaks on these, handle's broken. You know, the only difference in this uh, scenario is that I was able to take the core dumbbell handle apart and I wasn't able to do that on the new Obel last time. I am going to attempt it again now that I see how a lot of these are assembled and I'm going to see if I can now pull that other handle apart without destroying it. Um, is there anything else? Let's see. Oh, and there was, <laughs> yeah, this, this is just one other part. Basically, this component here, this component here, oops, locks in, uses this little plastic part right here and that locks into this handle that's all so this just keeps this tube from rotating on this uh, body here so that the body stays stationary and the grip and the numbers rotate uh, that's I think the only thing I didn't explain here so so that's it guys um, I, I love the design of this dumbbell I do hope that core, um, you know, comes up with a better way to do these shafts. I'd really like to see them use a more robust metal or a plastic that is going to be much more elastic and not crack in the way that this plastic does. Um, and if they do that, they'll have, they'll have a really, really great dumbbell. The plates themselves are well made. If you have not picked up a core dumbbell uh, plate, it just feels like a decent plate. It's not something that I think that, you know, you're going to drop and uh, destroy the covering of the plate. I haven't tested that, but I don't think that that is going to happen. My handles, um, for what it's worth, they haven't broken yet. But it, it looks like, you know, one good accident, one good drop, and I probably am going to be in the same boat as uh, David was when his handles broke. So uh, hopefully you found this helpful, guys. And uh, in the next video, I think, oh, Snowed, AD80, that's right. I am going to do a Snowed AD80 teardown and take a look at it, compare it to the AD28. And Snowed had also sent me some parts to show you that you can indeed get repair parts for the Snowed. And we'll talk about that more in the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this thing helpful. And uh, if you did, I hope you'll hit the like and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next video. Have a great evening.